Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss on the new chapter that is sources of energy. This chapter is coming under in a module one. So you know that myself uh, Santosh Kundu, assistant professor working in the department of mechanical engineering, Vivekananda College of Engineering and uh, Technology. We are going to start with the first chapter uh, that is sources of energy, the module one. So first we need to know about some of the terminologies of the sources of energy. First one uh, that is the calorific value of a fuel. Here the calorific value of a fuel can be defined as it is the calorific value or of heat compression or heating value of a sample of a fuel. Uh, these, all three, these three names can be called uh, for the calorific value of a fuel and it is defined as the amount of heat evolved when unit weight of the fuel is completely burnt. We know different types of fuels we have studied in the previous uh, uh, classes where we are going to come across the solid fuel, liquid fuel or gaseous fuel. So you can take an example of any fuel whenever you burn a unit quantity of a fuel or known quantity of a fuel. Say suppose I am for an example I am going to take uh, 1 kg of petrol. I am going to take 1 kg of petrol as a fuel and I am going to burn it. So you, whenever I burn 1 kg of petrol, how much amount of heat is evolved from the 1 kg of petrol? That is nothing but the calorific value of that petrol. So we can define the calorific value uh, as low calorific value or higher calorific value. It is usually expressed in a uh, gross calorific value. Gross calorific value is nothing but it's the entire overall calorific value and higher heating value that is HHV and net calorific value that is NCV and low heating value that is LHV we are going to call. And next for higher calorific value as we already said we are going to call it as a gross calorific value or higher heating value the water of combustion is entirely condensed and that the heat contained in the water vapor is recovered so uh, we are going to take an example of a water we are going to start heating the water right? whenever you heat the water and uh, we are going to completely collect that steam we are going to condense that steam and uh, whatever the heat there within that condensed uh, steam we are going to take it out whenever we take it completely from the water vapor we are going to call it as higher calorific value and coming for lower calorific value that is also called as NCV or LHV that is net calorific value or lower heating value respectively the products of combustion contains the water vapor and that the heat in the water vapor is not recovered as we already say that if the complete heat in the condensed water is not recovered from it then we are going to call it as lower calorific value of a fuel. Fuel should be compared based on the net calorific value that is NCV and combustion or combustion of products how it is going to happen if you want to uh, take a calorific value from the fuel we need to combust it we need to burn it we know that so combustion definition is combustion or burning is a sequence of exothermic chemical reaction between the fuel and the oxidant accompanied by the production of heat and conversion of chemical species the release of heat can be produce a light in the form either of glowing or in the form of flame so combustion we know that we have naturally we are going to see it so it is not it is nothing but a burning process it is an exothermic chemical reaction we are going to call where the fuel and oxidant are going to react together and they are going to produce a heat that heat we are going to convert it into a useful form so uh, that uh, heat can produce a light or a glow in the form of glowing or in the form of a flame in a complete combustion again the combustion uh, accompanies with the two factors that is the complete combustion and incomplete combustion that is complete burning and incomplete burning complete combustion reaction a compound reacts with an oxidizing element such as oxygen or fluorine and the products are compounds of each element in the fuel with the oxidizing element process releases heat energy so in complete combustion the fuel is going to react with the oxygen and fluorine and it is going to produce the heat so fuel plus oxidizer we are going to call so whenever those two are going to be mixed then combustion products we are going to evolve and in, in the with that combustion products we are going to evolve the heat energy for an example i am going to consider a methane gas ch4 and i am going to combine that methane gas to the oxygen that is two amounts of oxygen we are going to mix so that the combustion products are co2 co2 gas is evolved from the combustion and again we are going to have a water vapors that is two moles of water vapor we are going to 
get that is expressed in the form of chemical reaction we are going to uh, express that one in the form of chemical reaction that is this one and next we have a uh, types of combustion that is complete combustion and incomplete combustion and again a slow or a smoldering combustion we are going to call then what do you mean by complete combustion okay now we know the definition of combustion we can directly say that the complete combustion is nothing but mm, the reactant burns in oxygen producing a limited number of products when a hydrocarbon burns in oxygen the reaction will be primary yield carbon dioxide and water when elements are burned the, the products are primarily the most common oxides carbon will yield carbon dioxide sulfur will yield sulfur dioxide and iron will yield iron oxide so in a complete combustion the uh, products after combustion will be very less so that if the uh, products after combustion that is the pollutants are very less then we are going to call it as a complete combustion that is carbon produces carbon dioxide sulfur produces sulfur dioxide and iron will yield iron oxide then incomplete combustion that is opposite to that of complete combustion that is the combustion will occur when there is not enough oxygen to allow the fuel to react completely to produce carbon dioxide and water it also happens when the combustion is quenched by a heat sink such as solid flame or flame trap some uh, say suppose some amount of moisture or water content which is already present in the fuel so it won't allow the fuel to completely burn so that is nothing but a incomplete combustion then the products after combustion is very much higher for for that then next comes a smoldering or a slow combustion in a slow or low temperature flameless form of combustion sustained by heat evolved when oxygen directly attacks uh, attacks the surface of a condensed phase fuel it is typically incomplete combustion reaction solid materials that can sustain this smoldering reaction include coal cellulose wood cotton tobacco peat or dust common examples of smoldering phenomena are the initiation of residential fires and upholstered furniture by weak heat sources example a cigarette a short circuit wire and a persistent combustion of biomass behind the flaming prints of wild fires that is very simple we are going to call a slow combustion as a low temperature uh, combustion and it is a flameless form of combustion no flames are produced in this low combustion sustained by the heat evolved when oxygen directly attacks the surface of a condensed phase of fuel so the oxygen only attacks the outer surface of the fuel not the inner surface of the fuel when outer surface of the fuel burns and inner surface remains as it is then we are going to call it a slow combustion and as from the outskirt or layer by layer it goes inside that is nothing but a slow combustion or smoldering combustion examples are cellulose coal wood cotton tobacco peat and dust are the examples of smoldering combustion then next comes a word a terminology called as solar constant the average amount of solar radiation received by the earth's atmosphere per unit area when the earth is at its mean distance from the sun we are going to define the solar constant as it is the average amount of solar rays or sun rays coming to the earth atmosphere per unit area say suppose one square area i am going to take Square meter area and how much amount of say solar radiations are coming and hitting the Earth's atmosphere? That one square area, I am going to measure it when the Earth is at its mean distance from the Sun. The, the the condition is the Earth should be or the one square area should be a mean distance from the Sun. It is equal to thirteen seventy watts per square meter. Per square meter, we are going to get thirteen seventy watts of solar radiation. Solar radiation varies with the Earth distance from the Sun and with the appearance or decay of sunspots that we know it already next comes the different sources of energy how we can uh, produce a useful form of energy from different sources first one is a very simple um, source of energy that is hydropower plant hydropower plant is nothing but we are going to generate the electricity or the power by using the water hydro means it is a water power plant means power means we are going to call the power as electricity and the plant is the setup that we are moving to make to extract the electricity from the water we are going to call it as hydro power plant first we uh, these are the elements i am going to explain first we have a water reservoir and here we have a dam many dams you can see in day to day life the, the whenever there is a flow of water to restrict that flow of water we are going to construct a dam and we are going to store the water at the reservoir and again we have a pen stock penstone this water reservoir higher potential energy of water is going to convert it into a kinetic energy through this small penstone this is control gate 
open and close and here we have a generator and here we have a turbine this is the main heart of the hydro power plant to generate the electricity and in generator we are going to generate the electricity and this is powerhouse we are going to call it as a transformer through the transformer the cables are going to uh, the uh, what is that uh, light poles uh, electric poles and again it is going to supply to the power uh, power to the house here uh, first it is a very simple process of extraction of uh, uh, um, energy or electricity so we have a huge amount of uh, potential energy stored water stored water uh, beside the dam beside the dam we have a higher potential energy of the water and that higher potential energy we are going to convert that potential energy into a kinetic energy so what we are going to do to we know that potential means it's a standing energy and kinetic means it's a moving energy so this potential energy of water we are going to convert it into higher kinetic energy so what we are going to do is the huge uh, reserved water we are going to pass it through a small pen stop small pen stop means it's a small diameter hole or small diameter pipe through that we are going to pass this huge amount of water through the control gates how much amount of water has to be flowing flowing in the pen stop has to be controlled by the small gate right so this gate will be controlled manually and again the water will be flowing through this pen stop with a higher kinetic energy that is with high velocity the water will be moving here and we have a turbine setup the turbine is having these blades rotating blades and whenever the huge amount of kinetic energy is going to hit the blades of the turbine it is going to rotate whenever it rotates it is going to the shaft of the gen, uh, turbine is connected to a shaft of the generator and in turn when the turbine rotates it is going to rotate the generator also so whenever the generator uh, is rotating we are going to generate the electricity so the main key heart is we have to rotate this turbine through a higher level of kinetic energy and after uh, the extraction or the after rotating the turbine uh, from the water that uh, decreases its uh, kinetic energy and again it is going to flow through a uh, what is that pipeline and again it is going to store at a other place or it is going to be supplied at the other end isn't it so this is the generation of electricity from the hydro power plant whenever the electricity is generated we are going to send it to the uh, electric poles and again to the houses so this is the generation of electricity from the hydro power plant just the procedure you have to remember we have we have lot other terms uh, how we are going to couple a turbine to a generator so all things are there but that is not there for our syllabus just understand how the hydro power plant is working and to explain about the hydroelectric power plant what is it it is a flowing water is used to turn a turbine which generates electricity when you are going to use a flowing water to turn the turbine here to turn the turbine to generate the electricity the advantages are when the electricity is generated no greenhouse gases are made here no greenhouse greenhouse gases are made here and the water is used is free and it is a renewable energy source of extraction and disadvantage is the dam is expensive to build to construct this dam we need huge amount of uh, cost or huge amount of money and by building a dam the nearby area has to be flooded and this could be affect nearby habitats so whenever the water is stored behind the dam a huge amount of area will be under the reservoir and if it does not rain um, rain much we may not have enough water to turn the turbine so huge amount of water should be stored within the and dams so, so that uh, we to extract the water or to, or to extract the electricity we need the huge amount of water beside the dam then next is the tidal energy or the wave energy we are going to call what is it the waves you can imagine you can use a figure here incoming waves are there waves make a water to rise and fall the chamber whenever there is a tides so in the seas you are absorbed here the waves are going up and coming down air is forced back and forth through a turbine right a turbine and generator is fixed here right so these are the turbines and generators so whenever the high tide is coming it is going to push the turbine and when there is a low tide it is going to rotate it so what is it waves force air in and out of a chamber here waves are responsible to push the air in and out of a chamber the air causes the turbine to generate electricity whenever the air is moving in and out so the it is going to rotate the blades of the turbine and it is going to generate the electricity the advantages are waves are free and will not run out so waves 
are many. So it is bound going to run out. Wave power does not produce greenhouse gases. Here also no greenhouse gases are produced from the tides. There are very few safety risks are involved in the waves. Disadvantages are small waves generate small amount of electricity that we know. The tides are very less. Now the less uh, height tides are coming, we are going to generate the lesser amount of electricity. Electricity needs to be transported from the sea into the land. That is very very difficult task. Whenever we generate the electricity here, how we are going to connect it to a uh, surface or uh, connect it uh, to a land. It is very very uh, costly. The equipment is expensive. The equipment that we are using are very much expensive here. Next comes a solar power. Solar power we have already studied in the lower classes, right? So what is it? Solar power uses the energy from the sun. Here we are going to use the energy from the sun. Solar panels transfer the sun's energy to a heat water. So whenever uh, we collect this solar rays here, this gets heated up and we are going to uh, send that heat to the heat the water. That is nothing but a solar power. Advantages are energy from the sun is free. Always we are going to obtain a free sun energy. The sun does not produce greenhouse gases. Here the sun's energy does not produce any greenhouse gases. The sun will always be there during our lifetime. So we can we continuously extract the um, heat from the sun. Disadvantages are solar panels are expensive. That is very very important. As this solar panels what we have placed on the house is very very expensive. When it is cloudy or at night there is not enough light. So whenever it is cloudy it is very difficult to extract the energy from the sun. Some people didn't like the look of solar panels that is dependent uh, that economics uh, or the look is dependent on the individual but we can call it as a disadvantage next is a solar cell solar cell is uh, used on the cars also so we have a solar cars we have uh, our uh, ec department has uh, developed from solar car in uh, last year i think so that is running by the solar uh, that is running by the electricity which is generated from the cells solar cells so what is it? Solar cells use energy from the sun. We know that solar cells are going to use the energy from the sun. Solar panels transfer the sun's energy directly into the electricity. This solar sun radiations which are coming and heating this uh, silicon cells is going to be converted into electricity and it is going to um, use to run the car. So that is the solar cells. Here so solar cells are there, DC power. We are going to send it to a charge controller and we are going to store it in a battery inverter. Again we are going to um, uh, send it, uh, convert from the inverter, we are going to convert from DC to AC and again we are going to send it to the houses. And the advantage is the energy from the sun is free, right? We know that sun does not produce greenhouse gases, the sun will always be there during our lifetime. Same you know, advantages. And disadvantages are solar cells are expensive, they take up lots of space and they only work in sunlight. So that is uh, the end disadvantage of so, solar cells. Next comes uh, the solar cells itself that is electrical energy that is helioelectric process we are going to call. In a helioelectric process uh, we have a solar plant right we have solar sun rays are coming and hitting this cover glass and again we have a transparent adhesive here and anti-reflection film and we have a PN junction N type silicon layer and PN junction is here and load cell we have connected N junction with negative and uh, P junction with positive real metal contact and P type silicon layer is produced. P N junction we are going to make it inside a photovoltaic cell. What all is there? Here we have you know, you know that the in a P N junction P N is nothing but photons and there is nothing but uh, the neutrons. So in a P uh, in photons we have positive energy and in uh, N we are uh, neutrons that we are going to have a negative form of energy. So we have uh, holes filled by the freed electrons. So whenever uh, you do the heat for the uh, metal contact or give the heat for the uh, cover beer glass, what will happen? The electrons is going to gain the energy and it is going to jump from its uh, position. So whenever it jumps from its position, this uh, place or this position becomes empty. So that uh, empty space is uh, accompanied by the holes. So we are going to uh, have a moment of uh, uh, um, negative to positive mode. So we are going to generate the electricity here. So no, first, the, it is filled with all the electrons. Whenever the sun radiations are coming and uh, hitting this uh, uh, electrons, it is going to jump from its original position. And again, this position, this freed electron is going to move up and the holes are filled in the gap of the freed electrons. So when this happens continuously, we are going to generate the 
current where the flow of current can be observed here the electrons are moving here it is negative form and it is going to blow the bulb and again uh, the positive charge is moving from this end right so it is going to come from the positive charge so this is nothing but the working of the helioelectric process or the um, pn junction and n type layer junction p type layer so um, n is negative p is positive here and we are going to transfer it to the solar rays like this energy from the sun can be utilized through a pn pn junction that is nothing but helioelectric process next comes the heliochemical process heliochemical process is nothing but we are going to use the sun's energy to do the chemical reactions so that is the most important one is a biogas plant a biogas plant is nothing but that is you have learnt in lower classes that is uh, here we have a biogas plant the different elements are we have mixing tank where the slurry we are going to prepare it that is the slurry is nothing but it is the edit addition of water with the cow dung and again there is the inlet pipe and we have a digester tank at the center water and dung mixture is settled in the digester and again outlet tank is there after the process of extraction of uh, ethane gas it is going to overflow through the tank we have a cover here we have a dome and uh, this uh, pipeline is uh, going to take the gas biogas produced and again through the valve it is going to somewhere going to send it to the uh, kitchen for uh, domestic purpose so uh, the working principle is very simple you already know that we are going to collect the cow dung here and we are going to mix the water uh, to have a reaction uh, so water and dung is uh, perfectly mixed and we are going to prepare the slurry and that slurry we are going to send it as an inlet to the digester here a digester uh, in the digester the slurry is going to remain for 45 days and after 45 days it is going to extract the methane gas that methane gas is going to collected at the top side of the digester this uh, gas is going to be flown uh, through a pipe and again we are going to send it as a at the outlet and that uh, uh, digested slurry is going to come through a overflow and again we are going to use it as a manure for the uh, fields okay so that is a, a very simple process uh, you know that already that is nothing but heliochemical process and it is a uh, chemical reactions happening from the sun's energy that is in biomass uh, biomass is a renewable energy source made of biological materials from living or recently living organisms we are going to collect the um, biomass and the energy is released by combustion burning by burning process we are going to release the energy so, so for a biomass uh, the sources are agriculture waste forestry crops and resources industrial resource mild resource municipal solid waste and sewage these all comprising or contributing to the biomass resources and um, advantages are produces less pollution than the fossil fuels here we can have a less pollution as that of the fossil fuels it does not cause acid rain it does not it, may, it never causes acid rain and it can be found locally and it is a renewable source of energy the disadvantages are inefficient only 30 percent of efficiency is obtained from this biomass release harmful solid carbon particles into the atmosphere harmful solid carbon particles very few very few solid carbon particles are coming out through the biomass process then the next one is the wind power plant wind power plant is uh, nothing but uh, through the rotation of the blades of the uh, turbine or the wind power plant we are going to generate the electricity many of the windmills uh, you can uh, see here here this is the operating principle of a windmill here there are different uh, elements nose cone the blade blades and wind shaft is there and it is connected uh, to a bearing and speed increasing device is there here and wind speed direction and indicator to uh, identify the wind speed we have the direction indicator here and we have a generator we have a cap and we have a yaw arm and a tail fan tail fin is there and windmill tower which is having the height of uh, 70 varying from 70 to 100 meters the height of the windmill so to prepare one windmill almost we, it is costing more than one crore rupees so the windmills are coming with the two blades, three blades and four blade you know, types of designs. So that is used in different locations. And here there is a nose cone wherever there is a high wind coming uh, at the mountains okay, and over the head of mountains we are going to fix this uh, windmill tower and again uh, we are going to um, uh, fix it in the direction of the wind travel and again whenever the wind is coming in it is going to rotate. And the blades are going to rotate and whenever it rotates the wind shaft is going to rotate and it is going to generate the electricity and that electricity we are going to 
take out from the wind power plant. This uh, elements you should remember, the diagram you should draw here and very simple process you should remember. Here the, the cap, uh, the wind speed direction indicator is there here. Whenever there is a change in the wind direction, it is going to indicate and slight movement of the uh, wings can be observed here or this hub can be observed and that technology is nowadays it has been developed and again we have a tail fin tail fin is nothing but um, uh, it is going to uh, for the it is going to use for the rotation of the hub so that is the tail fin and again we have a yarn this is the wind power plant and what is it wind turbines are used to generate the electricity from the wind from the we are going to use the wind energy and we are going to generate the electricity the wind turns the large blades and the blades turn a generator here the wind is going to rotate this large blades and again it is going to uh, rotate the generator that generates the electricity okay you can imagine here in the on the land also we have fixed the windmills and on the sea show sea also we have fixed the windmills the advantages are wind is renewable you know that wind is free that also you know no greenhouse gases are made here and there are very few safety risks are present in the windmill and disadvantages are a lot of wind turbines need to produce enough power lots of wind turbines are needed to produce enough power where some very less amount of power can be extracted from this windmills turbines can only be put in windy area in windy area we can put these turbines we can't put in, in every area it is not always windy so we can expect that no, no air always the, the air will not be flowing at a higher rate some people don't like the look of the turbine that is not a disadvantage but we can that uh, wind um, turbines are there in the say in the in the such a design that we are going to extract the maximum uh, energy from the wind okay then we have a nuclear power plant uh, in nuclear power plant, uh, we all know that the fusion and fusion process is going to perform. We have a nuclear reactor to generate the nuclear energy. So we have a reactor here, we have a control rods, we have a steam generator, we have a pump and again we have a steam line, steam is coming from this end and we have a turbine uh, for, and we have water uh, to lift the water, we have a pump and cooling water condenser connection is there here, we have, we have generator, power is produced again power is sent to the house and that cooling water condenser is there here there is a cooling tower to cool the water okay and again this is a sum to supply the extra water nuclear power plants are uh, very uh, very dangerous in operation we can call so here uh, we know that uh, the fission of fusion process is going to happen in, uh, in the nuclear power plant fusion process is nothing but the combining of two small elements and producing the uh, newer elements so at that particular time the uh, photon amount of energy is released and uh, in nuclear fusion we are going to break the large nuclei into pieces and again a uh, so photon amount of energy can be taken out from that that is nothing but uh, fission process so here uh, in uh, you have to remember only the working principle here we have a complete setup this is called as a reactor in the reactor we have the control rods so we are going to take a uranium 232 isotope and we are going to bombard it within the reactor so whenever there is a bombardment of a fission or fission reaction is going to happen so we can't manually go and control it within the reactor so we are going to have a control rods to control the fission or fusion process that is acting as a uh, what is that non-conductive layer between the uh, uh, fuels isn't it so in nuclear reactor we are going to put a uranium isotope and again we are going to start the nuclear reactor when it, during the fission and fusion reaction in the reactor that heat whatever the heat is about photon amount of energy that we are going to supply it through a pipe whenever we supply it through a pipe we have a steam generator here the heat is flowing within the pipe and whatever whatever the water present in the steam generator is going to be heated up and it is going to reach its boiling temperature and again it is going to produce the after the saturation temperature it is going to produce the vapor so that vapors are collected on top of the steam generator and again that heat after extraction after heating the water is going to come through a pump and again that same heat we are going to supply to the reactors uh, so uh, after uh, the generation of steam that high uh, pressurized steam we are going to send it to a turbines so through a steam line we are going to send that steam to a turbines and here we have a steam turbines is fixed already here 
and that steam we are going to pass it uh, with a higher uh, kinetic energy to the uh, steam turbine blades so that whenever that steam hits the blades of the turbine it is going to rotate the turbine so when the shaft of the turbine is connected to a generator shaft and whenever the turbine rotates the generator will also rotate and it is going to provide the produce the electricity that power we are going to send it to a cables and uh, through the cables we are going to send it to a poles and again we are going to send it to the houses so that expanded steam we know that steam is the vapor that is a water vapor a higher uh, high heated water vapor that whenever the steam is expanded from the turbine it is going to decrease its kinetic energy and that steam we should condense we are going to condense that steam and again we are going to uh, you uh, condense the, that steam and the condensed water we are going to collect it here and the same water and by decreasing the temperature again we are going to send it to the steam generator through the pump so here we have a cooling uh, water condenser here continuously we need to cool this water how we are going to cool it we have a cooling tower so the natural uh, sump water that is a uh, cold water we are going to supply it through the um, pipe and through this pipe it is going to move here so whenever the cold water is moving here it is going to exchange its uh, uh, temperature to the uh, condensed water and this condensed water temperature goes down and this water come uh, the water coming through the pipeline gets heated up and it is going to rise in this pipe and again it is going to come through the another pipe and again that water we again we are going to cool it and again we are going to reuse for the further process this is the complete process of nuclear power plant and in this uh, image you can uh, see how the nuclear power plant uh, working layout you can see here and what is it radiation is released from the nuclei of metal atoms we know that the fission and fusion reaction the nucleus are going to be that the radiation can be used to generate the electricity here the radiations whatever we are going to use that can be used to generate electricity and advantages are greenhouse gases are not made here also in this power plant greenhouse gases are absent and only a small amount of fuel is needed to create a lot amount of energy we know that the small amount of uh, nuclear fuel we can generate the huge amount of energy <laughs> and again uh, in disadvantages harmful radioactive waste is created and that is uh, very uh, very very dangerous to dispose in the um, ground we have many disposal techniques that is not there for your syllabus uranium supplies may only last for another 50, 50 years so the uranium whatever it is present is only lasting for another 50 years and it is the non-renewable source of energy and radiation may cause cancer the radiations coming from the reactor may cause the cancer also so this is the nuclear power plant so this is the explanation of the first chapter of module one and go through all these slides if you find any difficulty you can approach me at any time okay thank you very much thank you for patient listening